Good morning, and welcome to Sacred Heart Church. Today, we celebrate the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Anselm Russell, who is assisted by Deacon Keith Roberts and the altar servers. We now begin with the entrance hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have, have greatly sinned. sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Yeah. 
to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. Keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. 
On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have. Declare to generations to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and his strength and the wonders that he From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way, in righteousness and holiness 
of truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they had found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, after feeding the 5,000 men, the evangelist John begins the discourse on the bread of life, which will continue for a few more Sundays. 
And so the people who had witnessed this great miracle returned to seek Jesus once again, so as to satisfy their physical hunger. They assumed if he fed them once before, he would again provide food. But Jesus was not that type of king, nor was the kingdom he preached. The kingdom was not about personal satisfaction. It was about faith in Jesus Christ. The crowd focused upon what they could get from Jesus, not what they could give to Jesus in return for the greatest gift, life eternal. They were like their fathers in the desert who complained against God and Moses because they hungered for food that would not last. They sought their own satisfaction instead of the worship of the one true God. The people had been given the great gift of the Mosaic law, meant to guide them as individuals and as a nation intimately connected to God. And so during their time in the desert, the people had to confront their weaknesses in order to grasp the reality of this divine gift. The people in today's gospel seeking Jesus also did not understand the depth of God's gift to them in the person of Jesus and in his teachings. Because Jesus himself is the bread of life, which reveals God's love for the entire world. Like the people of Israel who struggled in grasping the deep meaning of God's gift of life eternal, we today must come to a greater understanding of God's love for each one of us. As Catholics, when we hear the words of Jesus, I am the bread of life, we usually think of the Eucharist. But how does the Eucharist become truly the bread of, of life for me and for you? You see, the Eucharist is a sign of God's great love for us through the life, passion, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. And so by being fed with this most precious gift, there must be evidence that we are nourished through the actions of our daily lives. Transformation must be evident as we continue our pilgrimage of metanoia, also through our generosity and sharing the good news with those who still hunger for Christ, Christ who is the truth and life, so that they too may be transformed. St. Paul in the second reading talks about this transformation as he instructs the Christians at Ephesus and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. Certainly this should happen to every Christian who receives Jesus in the Eucharist as Jesus challenges his listeners to trust him as the bread of life. We too must trust Jesus to sustain us in all that we do and say like physical food, which is essential to maintain life. The bread of life must be received not only to maintain the spiritual life, but to facilitate growth and transformation. Jesus spoke about the works of God and what we must do to be doing the works of God, namely to believe in God's Son, whom he has sent into the world. Jesus offers a new relationship with God which issues in a new kind of life, a life of sacrificial love, selfless service, and the forgiveness of others which corresponds to God's mercy, God's goodness and loving kindness. Also, a life of holiness, purity, and truth which corresponds to the holiness of God. And thirdly, a life of obedience and trust, 
which corresponds to God's offer of the fullness of life, of peace and happiness. This is the work which Jesus directs us to and enables us to perform in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in our Heavenly Father and the riches of His grace, we now make our prayers known to Him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may receive from the Holy Spirit the grace and strength to reform herself in the light of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our legislators and government leaders, that they may pursue justice, truth, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those bearing burdens, that the Lord will build up strength within them and assist them in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community may advance in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially from our families and our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to seek more fervently the food that endures for eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and its people, from the destructive forces of nature, especially during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our visitors, that your time with us will be restful and renewing, and that the God of heaven protect you while you are here, and bless you abundantly as you retain, return safe 
and sound to your homes and families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs, we silently pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, help us to put away the old self and to be renewed in spirit, recreated in righteousness and holiness of truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
but my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord.
take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
We will now repeat the arc of spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now, as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your Presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart. Gift of finest wheat, come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord. Then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name in truth and clarity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gifts finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to Those you renew with these heavenly gifts. 
Church, he is. 